Okay, I thought I'd touch upon the origins of Isis and where that actually comes from in ancient Egypt. We know it's from the very start of ancient Egypt, but can we show something otherwise? The opening there showed something from my childhood. It may still be in syndication to where you can see it somewhat, but there's an old uh, childhood Saturday morning cartoon, but a lot of those were live action. Like they had Shazam and uh, Electra Woman and Dinah Girl and things like that. And they had Isis, where that lady, I forget what her name, Cameron. And uh, she's shown that. Also, we showed Isis right in the very start and the end coming into this. And then a red-haired version of Hathor after. But those also have connectives and then in the later dynasties actually get mended together as one that's for a little bit later so where we're looking at is Magura cave and a couple of other cave sites here and uh, where we're looking at is under Anatolian area and up above and they have this Sun symbology something that looks like T pillars here on the left too it's a lot of cave art, and this dates from right at the end of the Younger Dryas type event area. So, this looks like it was associated with a Natufian culture also. Now, hand of God, if you will, if we look down here, we can see people with bull heads and horns on their heads. Much like you would think of as like a Viking helmet. But that arching coming up is shown in a lot of iconography and it's a little different. And because there were a lot of cultures that got affected by the people that brought agriculture and cows you get variations on a theme. And I've tried to show this but also their connectives. And this early goddess, the Queen of Heaven herself, a bird goddess, can be seen over here very easily. Almost got a Superman symbol on her right here. And she's doing this arching of her wings, and there's a bird head that's there. Now, also associated with this scene are these letters, like Jacob's letter, if you will, and looking regularly like letters. But they're also like declamations of time, if you will. And then I've shown in other videos, we don't have to necessarily go there now, but at this time, there were cultures that were putting their deceased up on deuses, one of the ways we get the name Dias, but that comes from day also and gets conflagrated, but also Dios is the name of gods. We'll get there. Anyhow, these Dias that were up there, trying to raise you to an elevated state, would allow the birds to come in and take pieces of you up to heaven. There were ancient connections to birds. They're very sacred creatures. And you can definitely see that it affected Egypt and its very origins. And even though there was a conflagration of a few different people, they kept that. And I think a lot of the main reason is because they already had variations on a theme of this same thing. You can see a bird-headed god that looks very much like the Egyptian bird-headed god of Horus but it's somebody different said to be somebody different but in reality they seem to stem from the same place now some of these people put them up on deuses and set them on fire and burn them like an offering or a sacrifice and the smoke would take you up into the clouds and you became part of the clouds and went up into heaven that way the other way was birds and so that's why we have a connection which sounds odd whenever you see it sometimes of vultures 
even in the headdress and the uraeus that are on the Egyptians, they have the cobra there, which also shows you deep snake worship from way back when. But also, they'll have this other symbology with it that is not Horus or whatever. It is a vulture. What we would call here in the southern states a buzzard. This is a magical creature that has huge wingspans. And they're able to, without any effort, sometimes none at all, fly for hours and hours. And they can go way up in the sky into the clouds, like condors, things along that nature. And so this is a sacred symbology of life and death. So we can probably figure that in fairly easy there. And the same symbology is shown in a lot of different cave arts. And I've shown that in a few different ways in a few different places. But again, this is deep in this Magura cave here. Now we're going into another cave network where down in it there are other pictures. And you can see another symbology here, and uh, I didn't catch the picture just right, but right there off the end of the screen is one of those ballerina poses. And notice that the women are wearing dresses here, and here, and here. Yeah, it's uh, uh, that thing that looks like in a bathroom, like you choose men or women. We all understand that iconography. And it looks like these guys here... I don't know, hunting things that look like ostriches and antelopes, but they only have two legs, so this must be ostriches from way up in this time here. But then there's that ballerina that's over there, and we'll call it ballerina, if you will, but it also is the earliest of Isis forms that we have. And all this cave art here going back 16, 18,000 years, and all these connectives are shown, even in this cave network that's up here, if you look through it, you'll have all these symbologies that there look somewhat like swastikas and so on, but I'm sure you can make it out that right here, with these dresses that are on, here's this same symbology. And it's all over these rocks that are here. <coughs> issue is all these rocks are up in northern Caucasus region and in the area like below Gobekli Tepe if you will and across to the left and the right and they found these so this is a scattering of the culture that comes after that in pretty much the same area some gets up into Bulgaria there's some that goes all the way into Russia it's all over the place, but you can see it here, and you can see it on the other one that's over there. Top left-hand corner, there's one that's barely in it, and as we scan across them, there's a few more of them here. So there's that idea, but then, what's this? Well, this is a sculpture. It's been dipped in red ochre, and of course, that's sacred from way back when and the origins, but this thing looks like it's been dipped from the waist up, and of course, before agriculture and so on women didn't get didn't get to stay pale as much and so they had somewhat of a tan but if she's wearing a strong or a dress there you go and you can see that bird head that's on her well where is this at this is in the Nakata culture free proto dynastic Egyptians if you will and there's that winged symbology it's not too hard to notice either the connections and if you've seen any pictures of Isis which we'll look at here in a moment you can see that but then in this pre-dynastic Egyptian art here that one is not alone right up the far left there's one doing the same pose there's one here there's one that looks like the same one we saw but that's different here's another here and of course here she is right here Women are drawn pale. Men, men have red ochre. There's a stick art from Nakata culture, and you can even see the blue eyes in this. And, of course, this is a more of a maiden, okay? 
So we can understand that when, whenever we look at Venus photographs or pictures of Venus and so on, that we're seeing something that looks um, in two different forms. We see one that looks like a young maiden ready to go and we see another one in the, especially those old archaic ones that we find and I've did a whole video series on it on this Venus ideal and Venus goes through this stage where she's a different person and when she becomes a mother there's something different nobody wants to mess with a mother bear and so on she becomes a goddess of love, well, from a goddess of love to a goddess of war. There's a conflagration of Aries that does this same situation, but of course during this time people getting their oats in more ways than one all over these different places. There started being some retaliation and so on. If you've ever seen any Nakata art, like even what's found with Ginger, the pre-dynastic mummy there that's blonde, shows the same symbology on it about half the time and there's a boat that goes along with it and all these are supposed to be oars so this is indicating that a large amount of people had come here and on this double dias that's even built on the ship that's here there it is again that symbology and they seem kind of round-headed there, but I guess if they were turning it to the side, you might see that beak idea of a nose, an aquiline-type appearance to it. But there's a difference and a duality to her, and it's kept as one. But what's kept as one as is that she's the sacred virgin, as in Virgo, pretty much. It's the same thing as Artemis and Diana and Inanna and all the gods and goddesses that hook up to this exact same thing back then. It's also hooked up with our current religion when we talk about Mary. And now she's a perpetual virgin. In fact, she had a virgin birth, so ha ha ha, and all that stuff, it comes magically. Right? Iconographies that keep showing up. And the one that you usually at a glance can get is the one where she's batting her wings and holding them out in a cowl in an upward stance like that which is mimicking that same thing from the pre-dynastic and you can see it if you said Nakata and here it is and there it is but then I've shown you 16, 18,000 years old and 9,000 coming down this way lo and behold but another thing that you see with her is this vulture headdress and the vulture headdress which their vulture iconography way back at Gobekli Tepe that we've already talked about bunch of times but you'll see that headdress on her quite often she's drawn as real pale and of course the goddesses and things like that that are there sometimes shown with the Uraeus but quite often like well, what, what's right there in the middle Astet or Aset or Isis is shown here with that Vulcan or not, Vulture not Vulcan oops Freudian slip there and that concept. So hopefully you can see that easy connection between Bedarians and the Nakata culture and so on that was right there and their sculptures and of course that's real close to coming into and what forms it so that makes good sense there. But what I'm showing you too is that it comes from a much earlier time and these people that are hooked up with agriculture and grains and so on and we know that comes down as a package into Egypt, as all of the guys say, and where they get to domesticate a cattle and everything from. And so it came down from that. In fact, I've got another video I was working on that makes a few other connections with I.O. and so on. So, kind of well known. 
Here's a good picture with the vulture on, the lotus, and everything that goes along with it. So remember that iconography as we continue on. I'm just at DuckDuckGo. I like doing that more than a lot of other places. Because they're not watching you like private eyes. So Isis is really a Greco-Roman word. You know, it's a Greeks where all those names are there. So the Greeks is Isis. Hesa, or Hekesa, is where you get Isis from. Of course, they have that sis us type thing. And is and ish and isha is hooked up with women from a way back time. Now, people have said because this lasted so long and it was hooked up so much that it has a lot to do with even things that came later out of it and conflagrated from different people. But as I've shown a lot of times, it came from before and that's why they had the variations on a theme. Whenever they got together over here, in the blending of it, certain ones became women, became men, men became women. And it wasn't just trying to knock women out. You can definitely see they were prominent. I could do a video about when we lost women in the religion thing, but it's not really for that. And for right now, we're actually trying to praise that idea. But here it even tells you the worship of Isis ended was ended by the rise of Christianity in the 4th through 6th centuries CE. Your worship may have been influenced, or may have influenced, Christian beliefs, which of course came very much later, and practices such as veneration of Mary. But the evidence for this influence is ambiguous, as people want to be, as it says, and often controversial because Isis continues to appear in Western culture, true, to this day and particularly in esotericism and modern paganism pagan is really looked at as oh what does pagan mean it meant agriculturists it meant the people that aren't living in the middle of the city living off the agriculturists it's all the people from before and all the old practices while these other people were developing these incredible pantheons in fact, Isis comes from a pantheon. She's a secondary pantheon. And what, what do I mean she's a secondary pantheon? Well, you know, they have the Ennead uh, in Egypt. And so, basically, there's Nut and Geb, which this is woman and man, and together and in creating the world and holding up the sky with the air concept. That's in all of these people in the Mediterranean, in Fertile Crescent, if you will, and oh, reaching farther than that. <clears throat> but also, it gets conflagrated along with cattle worshiping. mourning for the dead but of life because she's a bringer of life in fact here's the connection to mary where we always see mary and jesus and this is the version of her in fact they're showing this version but there are other versions and wall showings that look a lot closer <coughs> in fact in a modern day there are black madonnas that they have and that's really an ancient depiction of Isis. I've even shown one in an old video where they put a plaque on the front of it and they say that it's Mary. But that's the little plaque stuck on the front of it. Behind that it says Isis. Yeah. So here's even Isis holding King Seti I, which we just talked about the dynasties, the 18th dynasty and how this comes on through. So that's Seth, Seti the I. And she, he's sitting on her lap. Effectively make him the Jesus character or the Savior and stuff like that. Continuation. You see, that's one of the things that goes along with this that people don't get sometimes. Is that this was and is the continuation. You have her and Osiris that end up making Horus the Elder. Or the Horus the First One. 
and that sacred marriage is taken on by every person and every king and queen every time they go through this and when they have their children because they're going to grow up and they're going to become the kings and do the same thing kind of like when you grow up you're going to have kids and you're going to play Santa Claus and things like that like what happened to you and so there is this younger an older lady that happens out of this it works off the Hathor myth and things like that too but you can see her here depicted in her wings are folded up around her body on the bottom half here and then on the top part she's got that thing that looks like a turkey but that's a buzzard cow horns the whole nine yards draping her wings down it's on the back edge of the sarcophagus on the side of it, showing the connection to life and death. The Nubis is there. She's taking part in the ceremonies that go on here. She's supposed to be, I believe, the one on the left and the one on the right is Nephthys. Yeah, Isis left and Nephthys right. Stand as Anubis and Balms the deceased. Well, did somebody wear a Nubis outfit when they embalmed them and everything? No, but whenever they did certain rites, they came across and did the exact same thing like they're showing here. And they had chants whenever they were wrapping them and putting certain scarabs on them. I just did a video about scarabs and how that works with a heart scarab and how a scarab gets put in your ear and tells you the secrets just in case you forget, even though you were given a book of the dead or a book of coming forth by day. <clears throat> here's a weird one where Isis is shown as a Naga type serpent uh, yeah just like that thing in the Bible too but it almost looks India if you will but this is Thermuthis second century the common era version of Isis here's a figurine of Isis slash Aphrodite Aphrodite is conflagrated her with her somewhat and you get that idea that uh, uh, Diana uh, is hooked up with her too Artemis and Diana and that's because you have that duality situation again but Diana is really Dio Anna like we talked about gods and goddesses and so I said Dia Dia Anna Diana, that's how that works. Just like Inanna, which in mean the Lord, and so that's Anna. So here's somebody in Dutch talking about a girl named Anna. Even Annika. This goes along with that. Just like Anne of Green Gables goes along with this. Hmm. But that's in a different way. That's Inanna. But these are all similar characters and so on and of course the end Aphrodite there's the one where she shows herself and that causes a different for the gods of death and it, it it's a whole story about it I did a video about it no need to go into it Tayet Am Amulet which actually has to do with this and if you look at it there's an Ankh as a person trapped inside doing life also a pillar bottom half Around the very top on the head part, there's a hole going through that, so you can wear this as a necklace. This is like 14th, 15th century BC. Philae is seen by Bigga Island. Philae was an island that's now totally underwater. In fact, if you were to paint a picture of it now, it's all underwater. I did a recent video about Buhin and the places that were pretty much keeping any. Nubians from coming in and they weren't allowed in and so on but this Philae here on this island that was there was supposed to allow some of their major people to come in and worship Isis at this temple during certain times here again we see a different depiction of Isis and Nephthys Isis again is on the left Nephthys on the right she looks like she's wearing a top hat over here on the left and this is uh, showing them as kites. A kite's a type of falcon type of bird, if you will. 
So going along with the Horus idea and keeping that bird concept. But the remains of the Temple of Isis on Delos, so they had a temple there. Even though they have a goddess that equates to that, they went ahead and had a temple just like that too. The Greeks were full of all types of gods and goddesses, but they were embracing it all. All of the above. And really in our modern day, they pretty much picked and choosed and made it all of the above into one again. Strange tale about that that I've found in the Greeks too. They tell you that these farmers, these Ethiopians and people that lived on river systems and were the ones that were farming basically, so you would call them rednecks nowadays, that they only worshipped two gods. They had the incredible All Sky Father and they had a god of resurrection. Now these of course they equate to Zeus and Dionysus. But in that fact, in a modern day, <coughs> don't we have a Sky Father Old Testament and a New Testament, which actually is a resurrection God? Funny how that works. Temple of Isis in Pompeii that was kept in real good shape here because it was all buried up in Pompeii. Coins call a Kasura bronze coin showing a portrait of Isis but this is Punic legends that go along with it and this is the people of ancient North Africa here's a Roman statue of Isis first or second century of common era so after Christ even they were still going on with it in fact that really didn't blend in till later till they uh, Another 102 years, they're going to take and turn and twist it. But she holds a cistrum and a pitcher of water. All of these attributes were, were added in a 17th century renovation, they say, because they don't have the hand that's there onto it, and they believe the cistrum was added to it. But, of course, if you took those two articles away, who's to say this isn't Mary or somebody else? I showed this picture not too long ago, but this is Isis on the right with her caretakers and the Egyptians on the right, one of which is a blonde shaking a sistrum, who is welcoming Io, this goddess, to Egypt. And it's from a fresco that's on the walls in Pompeii. She's getting carried by a man here that's carried her to it. But also in that weird tale, she came from the upper Caucasus region, if you will, and went up through there, came back through, and then whenever she's in the Caucasus, she gets told by the god that's trapped there now and having his liver eat out every day that she's going to end up doing great things and so on. But uh, that seems to be carried along with a cattle myth from way back when. Like the Greeks have these origin myths, and that seems to be one there. And if you look, she's got horns on her head, which conflagrates it straight to it. And, of course, you you look here at Isis looking at her, and she's kind of like, What are you doing with those horns on your head? Of course, she's probably looking at her saying, You know, you've got a dangerous cobra right there wrapped around your hands. Well, that's a sign that she's a healer and immune and a god and everything else. But snake worship and this Hermes... Thoth character here has got the Gadesis right there with him. He's a blonde. Her helper there looks just like her somewhat. Let's go on. Here's another depiction of a bust of Isis, Sothis, Demeter. So you can see they're connecting all of these goddesses there. And there's that sun symbol with the wings behind it that could have a scarab in it. Or it could be her just spreading her wings, couldn't it? This is from Hadrian's Villa, 2nd century of the Common Era. There's another one, the statue of Isis, Persephone. So see, there are variations because Isis had so much picked up to her because of drawing in other people, and eventually Hathor, that it becomes conflagrated like this. She has corkscrew locks of hair and a sistrum from Gortnia. Bronze figuring of Isis Fortuna with a cornucopia and then in her left hand is a rudder of a ship. Hmm. Abundance and sailing. And you can see the depictions that are shown there. It's kind of different. 
This looks more like that fresco we just saw that's in Pompeii, and it's a fresco of Isis wearing a crescent headdress and resting her foot on a celestial sphere. That's the world, first century of the Common Era. Yeah. A lot of people have tried to connect that little blonde-haired kid riding the horse to Alexander the Great. And then the thing over on the right it looks like an angel. It's an angel. Temples, pictures, frescoes. Here she is again in that motherly pose right here. Isis lactans, milk lactating harper crates. Uh, so that's from the 4th century yeah here's a beautiful piece of art that's actually in the Herbert Hoover National Historic Site one of the American presidents Isis is a veiled goddess of life and if you look they've done that special type of artistic work like there's a veil over her. there's some marble pieces that are like that are just incredibly outstanding and of course they probably made one like that to do the casting of this in the first place and then cast it out. But they tell you here Jesus and so on and everything else, but that's Isis. And you can actually see the Egyptian headdress that's trapped under it, can't you? So there's a lot of connections that are hooking up that. And uh, I mean, really, we could go either way with saying, you know, farther back in time or closer in time, but I think catching it at the time whenever Egypt is just starting out is extremely important. And then showing where it came from and where it comes up being, and there's even that still, I can, I can still feel it there in our modern religion. And iconography, yeah. So, uh, she's originally like a sky goddess, yeah, and uh, uh, representing the star Sirius and her husband Saw. Saw is the constellation of Orion, but that is the symbolic hunter, if you will. Uh, by Ptolemaic times, she was connected with rain, which Egyptian texts call a Nile in the sky, which the sun is protector of Ra's bark and with the moon, possibly because she's linked to a Greek lunar goddess, Artemis, as Diana, as we said. Shared a connection with the Egyptian fertility goddess, Bastet, which you've seen her before, and, uh, well, it's cutting her head off there, but it's a cat-type goddess. She is also called the Lady of Heaven, right, whose dominion over sky parallels, over Isis rules, over the Duat, and Horus's kingship on Earth. She's a universal goddess, in fact. Uh, she's hooked up in a lot of the different myths with the god Ptah and so on. And the temple in Dendera says, in each gnome it is she who is in every town and every gnome with her son Horus. So every representation you would have, you'd have something like that. In fact, go one deeper than that. From the time from before, like I've shown so many times, any representation that you had of something like this, wings or not, this is the same type of concept. They make the connections easy. It's funny when the Greeks show up and everything, they're like, oh, that's like this, and this is like that, that's like this. People try to veer off of that, but a long time ago when people were still making connections and not cowards, that the actual connections were made between, of course, Rome and the Greeks, and they knew these were the same ones. In fact, when you first start studying them, you study them as a complete, and what each name means in each one, and so on, and what part they had. And there's very little difference and discrepancy between them. There's a lot of iconography that goes along with this. Worship, festivals, everything else. But <clears throat> we'd have to say those are probably more modern times. Going around the times of the changing of the seasons and so on. Plutarch and later philosopher Proclus mentioned the veiled statue of the Egyptian goddess Neith. Who they conflagrated with Isis. Citing as an example of your universal and enigmatic wisdom, 
It bore the words, I am all that has been and is and will be, and no mortal has ever lifted my mantle. So the veil. Well, um, see that statue that was right there made out of bronze that had the veil on it? There's no way to do that either, is there? Anyhow, so there's a lot of configuration they have here, and they show that it's hooked up through Serapis, hooked up through Thoth, Hermes, Hellenized as Hermenubis, Hermes Trimagestus. A lot of those connections I've tried to show you over time here, where it's the same thing and variations on a theme. And just because we call it different doesn't mean that those people don't look at it and go, oh, okay, she's the sacred holy mother. She's this, that's Venus. And she does this, she does that. She's also hooked up with the moon. We know Venus is hooked up with the moon too. So there's a lot of connections that just keep going and going and going. And in a lot of those connections, there's variation on a theme. But in a lot of those connections, there's slight variations. And that's how we think of it something different. But here again, the possible influence on Christianity, because of that Holy Mother symbology, that, that was the thing. Well, let's see, whenever Jesus gets born, it's got to be set up like this thing, and a virgin birth, da, 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 and everything to go with the iconography that everybody had before, so they'll agree on it, right? Because it'll be this variation on a theme, like they're already agreeing on things like that. Again, there's that veil statue. No one's ever lifted my veil. Try it. You can't. It's solid bronze. Solid marble. So, Isis has connections from the Wayback Machine. And if we go back and we look at pre-dynastic women you see that iconography everywhere whether it's quite like that there's another blue-eyed statue with tattoos all over her body over here Nakata sculpture so this is beforehand a maiden somewhat and then all of a sudden boom and you're this person but again, whenever you're this person, you're never grandma. Grandma has another iconography with it. You eventually do become grandma, but in this ideal here, she's always the young one coming through. Why? Because as I become grandma, your daughter steps in. Where you used to be, and she has kids, and she's telling them about Santa Claus, and it just keeps going and going and going and this apparently from that sculptures we were showing there goes back from the Kata culture and if you look here, here's that ginger the pre-dynastic blonde haired mummy but uh, that vase right there shows that boat one of those people and the same type of iconography and you can see that same iconography over and over and over again look at all these people taking a bath on a cup so that picture that we're looking at there, and on that vase, and you see it a lot of the times on that wiggled ware that they have, that they know that's hooked up through the Nakata culture, and they make connections into the Near East and Levant area where people had had some of this same type of ware and the same type of pictures that go on it too. And then again, where is it before that? Well, it's off in those caves that we just showed. Where is it before that? Lost a time, but I bet it went on for tens of thousands of years. How much you want to bet? So Isis, origins, come from a time whenever they got that stuff together and there was a shaman that was teaching her daughter and coming up to a certain point. And then you all knew her as this little girl y'all all grew up with. And then she had to suddenly step up. Comes a different thing. She has kids and so on. Becomes a mother. She becomes a grandmother. She ha hands it down. It continues. Let me know what you think downstairs. Like, share, and subscribe, and enjoy. And peace. Angel.